Well, this is the Mayflower Hotel, a well-known Washington, D.C. landmark. And you might think, looking behind me, that everything's normal in Washington, D.C. It isn't. So this is Connecticut Avenue. Um, it's the road up. We're not more than much, sort of half a mile away from the White House. And can you see what's happening here in D.C.? The place is being boarded up. Uh, one or two businesses have not yet been boarded up, but they will be by the end of the day. And this is right throughout the city. Uh, and this is in anticipation of real violence following the result, or even an inconclusive result, of the election on Tuesday. So it's eight o'clock in the morning. As you can see, a few protesters are beginning to gather. Um, I wouldn't have dared show my face down here later in the day, I can tell you. Um, and let's just, get, let's just be straight about this. Why are they boarding up DC? What are they scared of? Are they scared of Trump supporters? Are they scared of some of these slightly crazy groups out in America? No. What they fear is that Trump wins and that we get, you know, from little groups like this, large-scale violence, looting and rioting. And I think there are two really important points we, that we've got to make here. If the Black Lives Matter movement was genuinely about racial equality, I don't think anybody would have a problem with it. None whatsoever. Um, and let's just think back to the civil rights movement, to Martin Luther King. You know, the most incredible orator with a very, very powerful message. And what did he say? You know, he said, I want my children to be judged not by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. And yet, what Black Lives Matter are campaigning for is for us all to be divided up and treated differently. And my fear is what this campaign actually does, rather than bringing people together, it actually turns them against each other. Funny thing is, all down this street are a series of big corporate businesses. And there's quite an irony here, because a lot of them gave money to the Black Lives Matter movement, and yet, they're now having to close down, effectively, for a few days over the election because they fear rioting and protest. There is quite an irony there, I think. The broader point is that in a democracy, you have a strong debate. One side wins, one side loses, and provided it's all been fair and above board, you accept the result. You know, it's why we have democracy. It's our means of sorting out our leaders and our means of sacking our leaders. And yet, what we now have got with the new radical left is a belief that they and their views are morally superior to those on the conservative right and they are quite prepared, if they get a result they don't like, uh, to try and overturn it with violence. And I, I just feel that we need to start teaching our young people that whether you like this opinion or you like the other opinion, actually in a democracy, they're both valid points of view. And I fear we're teaching people that one side's good and one side's evil, and that's leading to much of this protest that we see. Let's hope and pray there isn't violence in DC on Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, but I think uh, you can see from a city that is completely boarding up uh, that something bad may well happen. So there we are, defund, defund the police. Let's get this straight. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization that wants to overthrow capitalism, defund the police force. In the UK, they're even setting up as a political party. So let's not be conned. There's a big difference between, as I say, campaigning for equality and justice, and this organization, who many people wanted to support, believing that it would do good. Actually, it's doing huge harm.